Today, I'm ranking the top 50 players in Major League Baseball for the 2024 season. This is, of course, part of my 12 days of MLB rankings. This is indeed the final day. Merry Christmas to everybody out there who does celebrate. You see, I'm a little festive with my Christmas sweater on. I'm not going to give you a crazy long intro. I'll get sappy at the end of the video, but I really do appreciate all the support. Make sure to drop a like on the video because there's been so much work that's gone into this entire series and these rankings. It really does help support. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we're not done after this series is over. Lots of uploads coming at you all year long. So without further ado, let's get going into the top 50 players in Major League Baseball going into the 2024 season. Getting the top 50 started with a bold one at number 50, I've got Royce Lewis of the Minnesota Twins. You guys heard in the third base video, I'm just such a big fan of Royce Lewis. He's an absolute beast, battled through injuries, battled through some adversity. The former number one overall pick, I think is a top 50 player in the league in 70 games, 17 homers, 11 doubles, 57 RBIs, hitting 307 with a 364 on base, 549 slugging and a 913 OPS for an OPS plus at 149. Is it realistic to keep that rate going? No, but I think Lewis is a plus hitter. Playing third base is a great position for him. A lot of potential. Huge fan of Royce Lewis's. So yeah, top 50. Let's get it going. Back inside the top 50 for the first time in a minute, Cody Bellinger not currently signed to a team. Yeah, we had to put Belly back on the top 50 because what he did last year with the Chicago Cubs was fantastic. He's always been a great fielder, so you know that's still stuck. But last year, he brought the bat back. 26 homers, 29 doubles, 20 stolen bases with 97 RBIs, hitting 307 with a 356 on base, 525 slugging, and an 881 OPS for an OPS plus at 133. Cut the strikeout rate down, was getting on base, putting the ball in play finally again. Bellinger's going to get paid. I don't know by who, but he's going to get paid. He's really good. Similarly, another free agent up next at number 48, that is Blake Snell. The National League Cy Young Award winner last year is one of the top 50 players in the league. You just have to get him to throw 180 innings because the two times he's done that in his career, he has won the Cy Young both times. Last year, a major league best 2.25 ERA with a major league best ERA plus at 182, a whip at 1.89, a FIP at 3.44. He struck out 31.5% of the batters he faced when Blake Snell actually threw throw significant innings. He is disgustingly good. It's just a little bit risky at times. So Blake Snell, not going to go crazy high, but definitely in the top 50. Next up at number 47, I've got Michael Harris, center fielder of the Atlanta Braves. The 23-year-old has put up an impressive start to his major league career in two seasons. Across those two, he's averaging 18 homers, 30 doubles, 60 RBIs with 20 stolen bases, hitting 295 with a 334 on base, 494 slugging, and an 828 OPS for an OPS plus at 123. That combined with great defense, a cannon of an arm, rookie of the year, Michael Harris is a pro's pro. At only 23 years old, his talent is way beyond his years. Happy to get this guy on the list. At number 46, I've got Yandy Diaz of the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, Yandy, sneaky, a top 50 player in baseball. Like, he's not going to put up 40 home runs in a season, but he finished sixth in the MVP voting last year, was an all-star, won a silver slugger, hit 330 with a 410 on base, 522 slugging, and a 932 OPS for an OPS plus at 158. After a season where he had one at 142, Yandy just rakes, and he hit for power last year, a career-high 22 homers. At the plate, he was one of the best guys last season. Definitely top 50 worthy. Down a few spots here, but still inside the top 50 at number 45, Brandon Nimmo, center fielder of the New York Mets. Nimmo's just criminally underrated. I know you guys are going to put in the comment section, Mets bias, Mets bias, but Brandon Nimmo plays good center field defense. Since 2020, hasn't had an OPS plus below 127, so he has been at least 27% better than league average at the plate, and last year, he started to swing for some power, hitting a career high 24 homers, 30 doubles, 68 RBIs, with a 274 average, 363 on base, 466 slugging, and an 829 OPS. You guys are the bias ones. You just want to hate him because I like him and I'm a Mets fan. But Nimmo is a top 50 player. Keeping it in the National League East at number 44, another Atlanta Brave, Sean Murphy, catcher. Sean Murphy is definitely a top 50 player. Like when he's at his best defensively, he is elite behind the dish. And at the plate, he is definitely plus, especially for the catcher position. Hits the ball hard, barrel king doesn't really strike out that much. Now, he did only play in 108 games last year, but in those 108, 21 homers, 21 doubles, 68 RBIs, hitting 251 with a 365 on base, 478 slugging for an 844 OPS, and OPS plus at 125. It's arguably the best season of his career. He's one of the best catchers in the game. For the 43rd best player in Major League Baseball going into the 2024 season, I have Logan Webb of the San Francisco Giants. Logan Webb casually was one of the best pitchers in baseball last year. A Major League high, 216 innings on the mound in this day and age is just so incredible 
incredibly valuable, along with the fact that he's also just a good pitcher. 3.25 ERA, a whip at 1.074, crazy high ground ball rate, striking out about 23% of the batters he faced, walking under 4%. He finished second in the Cy Young voting. Logan Webb is sneaky, one of the best pitchers in baseball. Dropping down quite a few spots here at number 42, I've got Paul Goldschmidt of the St. Louis Cardinals. Goldie still got it, but the end of the season was scary for Goldschmidt, so I did have to bump him down a few. Still, in what was considered like probably the worst season of his career, 25 homers, 31 doubles, 80 RBIs, even stole 11 bases as a 35-year-old, hitting 268 with a 363 on base, 447 slugging for an 810 OPS, and OPS plus at 120. Not bad for a guy who had a bad season. Goldschmidt still got it, but I did have to drop him a few. Just outside the top 40, at number 41, I've got Zach Gallen of the Arizona Diamondbacks. If you could see me right now, I'm fist bumping. Got a Jersey boy in the top 50 here. Gallen has been one of the best pitchers in baseball the last couple seasons, finishing fifth in 2022 in the Cy Young voting, and then third this past season. A 3.47 ERA over the last two seasons, you're looking at a guy who's averaged 197 innings, 32 starts with a 3.04 ERA, a whip at 1.23, and a FIP at 3.16. A K rate of like 26.5 percent a walk rate of six this is an elite pitcher one of the best in the game Brent Strom's really unlocked the potential in Gallon in Arizona getting the top 40 started at number 40 Xander Bogarts of the San Diego Padres Bogarts dropping down 10 spots in today's video but still a very good player shockingly actually played the best defense of his career last season at shortstop with the Padres which is a plus but the bat wasn't as strong as it had been in previous years 155 games 19 homers 31 doubles 58 RBIs with 19 stolen bases is still a great season hitting 285 with a 350 on base, 440 slugging, and a 790 OPS for an OPS plus at 120. Still a plus player, still very good at the position. I know I bumped him down, but I still think Bogarts is for sure easy in this top 50. Another catcher up next here at number 39, I've got Will Smith of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Huge Will Smith fan. I think he's criminally underrated at the position. Battled some injuries last year with the Dodgers that kind of affected his production, but still put up really good numbers. Still one of the best catchers in the game. 126 games, 19 homers, 21 doubles, 76 RBI hitting 261 with a 359 on base, 438 slugging for a 797 OPS, and OPS plus at 114. Adding Shohei Otani to this roster is going to make the Dodgers even better, and a guy like Will Smith, who's going to be having all this protection around him, it's only going to help this guy shine even more. Geez, another National League player. For the 38th best player in Major League Baseball, my arch nemesis, Ozzy Albies of the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, Ozzy Albies is a top 50 player. I admit it in the second base video, I'll admit it in this one. He played really, really well. He shut up my overrated tag that I put on him because last year in 148 games, 33 homers, 30 doubles, 109 RBIs, hitting 280 with a 336 on base, 513 slugging, and an 849 OPS for an OPS plus of 124. It was by far the best season of his career. He is very much just entering his prime going into his 27-year-old season. Albies is a complete player, and as much as I hate to say it, I was wrong. The dude's not overrated. He's a top 50 player in the league. Top 40 even. Next up at number 37, I've got New York Mets first baseman Pete Alonzo. Oh God, please don't trade this guy because Pete really is just so good. He plays every single game pretty much every year. You could lock him in for about 40 home runs a season, 120 RBIs. The average was shockingly low last year down to 217, but he kind of was a little unlucky. Still though, a slash line of 217, 318, 504, gave him an OPS at 821 and an OPS plus at 122. Still got MVP votes, still was an all-star, debatably the best power hitter in the entire game. You know I I couldn't leave Pete off this list. Number 37. Let's head back to the pitching side here. At number 36, I've got Corbin Burns of the Milwaukee Brewers. I mean, you guys know Corbin Burns. He's a stud. Won the Cy Young back in 2021. Since then, has not really ever looked back. 193 innings last year, a 3.39 ERA with a National League best 1.069 whip. The K rate was a little bit down, down to 25%, but still, that's like at a rate where he is still way better than league average. And you've seen his stuff. I mean, it moves like a wiffle ball at times. Big strikeout guy, not a lot of hard contact. Everything you'd want out of a top pitcher, Corbin Burns does that going into a contract year. Let's see where he ends up and if he gets paid. For the 35th best player in Major League Baseball, let's go to Boston to talk about Rafi Big Scoops, Rafael Devers. What Devers lacks defensively totally makes up for it at the plate. I'm not even going to talk about his defense anymore. Let's just talk about how sick of a hitter he is. 26 years old last year, 33 homers, 34 doubles, 100 RBIs in 153 games, hitting 271 with a 351 on base, 500 slugging for an 851 OPS and an OPS plus at 126. I mean, for his career, OPS plus 124, averages 30 home runs a season, big power potential, hits to all fields. 
Devers is just simply one of the best hitters in the game and a top 35 player indeed. Coming in at number 34, I've got Zach Wheeler of the Philadelphia Phillies. Absolute horse on the mound. This dude just gives you innings and innings and innings and innings, and that's exactly what he did last year. They're also really good innings, by the way. 192 of them gave him a 3.61 ERA with a whip at 1.078 and a FIP at 3.15. Finished sixth in the Cy Young voting. Second time in three years, he's finished inside the top six. Strikeout rate, 26.9%. Walk rate, 5%. He limits base runners. You don't really ever get to smack around Zach. Wheeler he goes deep into games like his value is just so much to a team and he's a really good pitcher remember when people were saying he was an overpay yeah wrong about that Cattell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks is up next, and I got him at number 33. Marte really just does it all. A very solid player all around. He can even play the outfield sneaky. He's played a little center field before. Got to see him healthy last year, 150 games, 25 homers, 26 doubles, 9 triples, and 82 RBIs. Hitting 276 with a 358 on base, 485 slugging for an 844 OPS, and OPS plus at 128. The K rate down from the year before to 16.8% at almost 11% walk rate. Hits the ball hard. Love Cattell Marte. Glad he got to show off in the World Series so the national audience can know just how good he is. Coming in at number 32, I've got Kevin Gaussman, pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. Gaussman, one of the best pitchers in the league. You saw me rank him number three in my starting pitcher rankings the other day, so you know he's going to crack the top 50 today. 185 innings last year, a 3.16 ERA with an American League best 237 strikeouts, a whip at 1.178, a K rate of 31%, a walk rate of 7.2. Another guy who, if you look at what he's done the last three seasons, he's averaging 184 innings of three ERA and no base runners and striking out batters. Maybe it's because he's north of the border, but he's probably the most underrated pitcher in the game. And then just missing on the top 30, at number 31, my favorite number, Gunnar Henderson of the Baltimore Orioles. What a rookie season from Gunnar Henderson. Phenomenal. Obviously won the rookie of the year, won a silver slugger as a utility player, and finished eighth in the MVP. MVP voting as a 22-year-old, 28 homers, 29 doubles, 9 triples, and 82 RBIs with 10 stolen bases, hitting 255 with a 325 on base, 489 slugging for an 814 OPS, and OPS plus at 125. All around, just a stud, so young. This Orioles core is just so exciting for the future, and Gunnar Henderson is leading that core hopefully to some more success next season. Getting the top 30 started. At number 30, I've got Alex Bregman, third baseman of the Houston Astros. Bregman, just quiet, really good season again. That's kind of, I think, what we're going to expect from Alex Bregman now. Never going to see the 40 home runs again, like we saw during the juice ball season of 2019, but you can lock him in for like 25 homers, 30 doubles, and 100 RBIs, hitting 260 with a 363 on base, 441 slugging, and an 804 OPS for an OPS plus at 122. He's also a solid fielder. Nothing he does is particularly elite besides maybe walking, and not striking out. So those are two things, Mark, that he actually does elite. But overall, just does everything really well. Dropping down a few spots here today at number 29, I've got Trey Turner, shortstop of the Philadelphia Phillies. Had to drop Trey Turner down a bit. If it wasn't for the Philly fans shockingly giving him a standing ovation to encourage him to play better, he would have had a disastrous first season. He saved it, though. 155 games, 26 homers, 35 doubles, 5 triples, and 76 RBIs with 30 stolen bases, hitting 266 with a 320 on base, 459 slugging, and a 778 OPS for an OPS plus at 111. He's still obviously a solid player. I think now that he has a year of Philly underneath his belt, you're going to see him go back to that top-level form he once had because Trey Turner is really good. Next up at number 28, Adolis Garcia of the Texas Rangers. Gotta throw Adolis on here, man. He was so good last year for the Rangers. A couple good seasons in a row now. One of the main reasons why they were able to win the World Series last year. 148 games, 39 homers, 29 doubles, 107 RBIs, hitting 245 with a 328 on base, 508 slugging for an 836 OPS, and OPS plus at 123. Won a gold glove. He's great in the outfield. Has a hose, hose of an arm in right field. Got MVP votes. He was one of the leaders of that team, and he definitely was one of the better players as well. Newcomer to today's video at number 27, Bobby Witt Jr., shortstop of the Royals. Gotta throw Bobby Witt into this conversation. What he did last year was so encouraging for his future projections. Not that I ever doubted him, but like, wow. He has the chance to be a special player. At 23 years of age, 30 homers, 28 doubles, 11 triples, and 96 RBIs with 49 stolen bases, hitting 276 with a 319 on base, 495 slugging, and an 813 OPS for an OPS plus at 120. He improved his game defensively big time, which really helped helps bring up his value and solidifies him as one of these top 30 players in the league. That's seventh in MVP in the American League on the Royals. 
Must have been doing something right. Just outside the top 25 at number 26, I've got Nolan Arenado of the St. Louis Cardinals. Just like dropping Gulch, but I had to drop Arenado. He looked human for the first time ever. And I mean, even for a guy who has never really looked human, imagine this being like your worst season of your career. 26 homers, 26 doubles, 93 RBIs, hitting 266 with a 315 on base, 459 slugging, and a 774 OPS for an OPS plus at 109. I expect Arenado to bounce back. Like he's just so incredibly talented, so good. That Cardinal situation was weird last year, but it's definitely something we're going to keep a close eye on because it was a little bit scary. Getting the top 25 started at number 25, shortstop of the New York Mets, Francisco Lindor. All you Lindorks out there, turn away. You're not going to like to hear this, but this guy is one of the best players in the league right now. If you look at what he's done the last two seasons, he's played 160 games average, 28 homers, 29 doubles, 102 RBIs with 24 stolen bases from the shortstop position, to which he also plays elite defense, 262 average, 337 on base, 459 slugging for a 797 OPS and OPS plus 122. He's by no means one of the best hitting shortstops, like, I mean, he is, but he's not one of the best hitters in the league. But that plus hitting with that elite glove and just great base running makes him a top 25 player for sure. Next up at number 24, I've got Jose Altuve of the Houston Astros. Despite only playing in 90 games last year, Altuve still made such a big impact with the team. 17 homers, 21 doubles, 2 triples, and 51 RBIs, stealing 14 bases, hitting 311 with a 393 on base, 522 slugging, and a 915 OPS for an OPS plus at 151. The dude's just a legend. Going to go down as one of the best Houston Astros players of all time. As long as he's on the field, he's making a huge, ginormous impact for this team. One of the best, if not the best second baseman I've ever seen play during my lifetime. For the 23rd best player, we have to look at the highest ranked catcher for me this year. That's going to be Adley Rushman of the Baltimore Orioles. Yet yeah, we've seen two seasons of Adley Rushman sold. He's him. He's exactly as advertised. The former number one overall pick is changing the way that this organization looks and performs in Baltimore. This past year, 154 games, which is crazy for a catcher. 20 homers, 31 doubles, 80 RBIs, hitting 277 with a 374 on base, 435 slugging for an 809 OPS and an OPS plus at 128. All-star team, MVP votes, Silver Slugger, great defender behind the plate. Yeah, there's nothing Adley really can't do. He is a beast. Another young guy creeping up towards the top 20 here at number 22, I've got Corbin Carroll of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Talk about a rookie season. I mean, the National League Rookie of the Year, finished fifth in MVP voting in the National League, helped lead the Diamondbacks to a World Series, couldn't really have asked for much better. 155 games, 25 homers, 30 doubles, 10 triples, and 76 RBIs with a whopping 54 stolen bases, hitting 285 with a 362 on base, 506 slugging, and an 868 OPS for an OPS plus at 134. If you get the chance to watch Corbin Carroll run, just enjoy it. It's like he's gliding. It's like he's on skates. He's a special player. Going to be leading that Dimebacks team to a lot of success in the future. Just missing on the top 20, at number 21, I've got Spencer Strider, pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. If you ask me for one starting pitcher to throw and get some big outs for me, it's probably going to be Spencer Strider. In terms of stuff, he's got the nastiest among any starting pitchers in Major League Baseball, and it shows in his numbers. 186 innings last year, he had a Major League Best 281 strikeouts to a National League Best 2.85 FIP, a K rate of 36.8%, a walk rate of 7.6. He did get kind of dinked and doiked at times, ran into some tough luck, finished with an ERA at 3.86, but anybody who's watched this guy throw knows he's one of the best pitchers in the game but I had to keep him just outside the top 20 because the top 20 is pretty loaded getting the top 20 started at number 20 I've got Luis Robert of the Chicago White Sox this was the season we've all been waiting for from Luis Robert he was healthy played in 145 games by far a career high 38 homers, 36 doubles, 80 RBIs, and 20 stolen bases, hitting 264 with a 315 on base, 542 slugging, and an OPS at 857. He also got MVP votes despite being on a horrendous team. Won a silver slugger, was an all-star, plays incredible defense in center field. He's a sick athlete, hits the ball so hard too. That's the Luis Robert we've all been waiting for. That's a top 20 player in the league. Down just a couple spots here at number 19, I've got Fernando Tatis Jr. of the San Diego Padres. I have no doubt that Fernando Tatis Jr. is going to finish inside the top five of MVP voting next year. He's way too good not to, but he did struggle a bit in the second half with the Padres, something I got to take note of. Still, though, coming back from the PED suspension and an injury, 25 homers, 33 doubles, and 78 RBIs with 29 stolen bases, hitting 257 with a 322 on base, 449 slugging, and an OPS at 770 for an OPS plus 113. 
what was cool to see from Tatis defensively was amazing in right field. That athleticism plays so well. That cannon of an arm was perfect. The Padres found a new home for him, and it definitely works better than shortstop. For the 18th best player in Major League Baseball, the highest ranked pitcher in my rankings, that's going to be Garrett Cole of the New York Yankees. Cole really is just such a phenomenal pitcher. Has thrown over 200 innings five times since 2017, which is something you don't hear from modern day pitchers. He's the epitome of health, and he won the Cy Young last year. He was the best pitcher in the game. He is the best pitcher in the game. 209 innings, 2.63 ERA, a whip under one at .981. While the K rate was a little bit down, he doesn't walk anybody. Nobody hits the ball hard off of him. He gives up the occasional home run, but Garrett Cole's the best pitcher in the game. The Yankees, they got their guy. Next up at number 17, I gotta go with Marcus Simeon of the Texas Rangers. Simeon tends to be a little bit of an accumulator, but you know what? I don't care. In the last four full seasons he's played, he has led or tied Major League Baseball for the most games played at 161 or 162. Did it again last year, of course. 29 homers, 40 doubles, 4 triples, and 100 RBIs, stealing 14 bases, hitting 276 with a 348 on base, 478 slugging, and an 826 OPS for an OPS plus at 122. Finished third in the MVP voting for the third time in five seasons. All-Star Game, Silver Slugger, World Series Champion, and he's a phenomenal fielder. Simeon is just so good. Part of an amazing Rangers core they built in Texas. Just outside the top 15, at number 16, I got Bryce Harper of the Phillies now playing first base. I think if Harper was in the outfield, he might be cracking the top 10. First base limits him a little bit because he does get a bump with just how sick of an arm he had out there. Gets wasted at the position, but obviously at the plate is what you care about with Bryce Harper, where he's just phenomenal. 126 games last year, 21 homers, 29 doubles, 72 RBIs, hitting 293 with a 401 on base, 499 slugging, and a 900 OPS for an OPS plus at 146. I honestly don't love the spot where I ranked Harper, but because of how I do my rankings, this is just where he falls. He's going to be a top 10 player by the end of the year. I know he's going to be, but the way I do things, I just just, I couldn't put him ahead of guys that I technically ranked him behind at the position. It's complicated. Just know that Bryce Harper is really good, and this is not a shot at him at all. He's one of the best players in baseball. Also, like, 16 is a pretty good spot, too. Getting the top 15 started at number 15, just ever so slightly because of the position and the power. Matt Olson of the Atlanta Braves. Olson last year, yeah, uh, was pretty disgusting. Like, arguably one of the best hitters in baseball last season. 162 games, 54 homers, 139 RBIs. Obviously led Major League Baseball. 289 average, 389 on base, 604 slugging for a 993 OPS, and OPS plus at 162. Great defensively at first base, finished fourth in the MVP voting. Matt Olson is a nightmare that will never end for me as a Mets fan. The Braves are just that in general, but Matt Olson in particular, pretty dang good. You know who else is pretty dang good? His teammate, Austin Riley, who comes in as the 14th best player in Major League Baseball in my video. Yeah, so uh, Riley, pretty good as well. 37 homers, 32 doubles, 97 RBIs, again. The third straight season with 33 plus homers, 90 plus RBIs. He hit 281 with a 345 on base, 516 slugging, and an 861 OPS for an OPS plus at 128. All star, Silver Slugger, finished seventh in the MVP voting. Pretty good in the field now, too, at third base. I hate the Braves. All their players are so good. Dropping down a few spots here at number 13, I've got Manny Machado of the San Diego Padres. Had to bump him down, did not have a great season last year, but I have no doubt that Manny Machado will return to form. Just as recent as 2022, he finished second the MVP voting with a 157 OPS plus like uh what his defense was still immaculate last year and I mean even still at the plate in a down year 30 homers 20 doubles 91 RBIs didn't really hit for average or get on base but still finished with a 782 OPS for an OPS plus at 115 he's still the total package though and he's only 31 years old expecting to bounce back from Machado next year just slightly outside the top 10 at number 12 I've got Kyle Tucker of the Houston Astros I'm aware I'm probably a little more aggressive on Kyle Tucker than most people but he really is just so good. Since 2021, you're looking at a guy who's averaging 30 homers, 34 doubles, and 104 RBIs with 23 stolen bases a season, hitting 278 with a 353 average, 517 slugging, and an 870 OPS for an OPS plus at 139. Finished top five in the MVP voting last year, also an all-star and silver slugger. Got a great left-handed swing. Kyle Tucker's the complete package. I'm just such a big fan of his. And then just outside the top 10, his teammate missing it by one spot, that's Jordan Alvarez. If we were just simply talking about pure hitting, he's one of the five best pure hitters in the game. But him being at the DH position does kind of weaken it a little bit. Even still, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's pretty incredibly good. 114 games, 31 homers, 24 doubles, 97 RBIs, hitting 293 with a 407 on base, 583 slugging for an OPS at 990 and an OPS plus at 1. 170. He has a career OPS plus at 165. Like, talk about just a dude 
who rakes and mashes, you'd find Jordan Alvarez's picture there in the dictionary next to the word rake or mash. He's just that good. Now, to get the top 10 started at number 10, I've got J-Rod, Julio Rodriguez of the Seattle Mariners. Julio Rodriguez is so, so good. He got better last year. How is it possible? After an amazing rookie season where he won the Rookie of the Year, finished seventh in MVP voting, did it again last year, guys. He did it again. 32 homers, 37 doubles, 103 RBIs with 37 stolen bases, hitting 275 with a 333 on base, 485 slugging for an OPS plus at 128 and just a straight up OPS at 818. All-star game, silver slugger, fourth in MVP voting. Obviously, defensively, he is one of the best center fielders in the game and he's only 23. This is a generational talent, definitely inside the top 10 for me. Back inside the top 10 for another year, at number nine, I've got Jose Ramirez of the Cleveland Guardians. Talk about underrated. Jose Ramirez is one of those guys because he plays in Cleveland. But last year, he did that Jose Ramirez thing where 24 homers, 36 doubles, five triples, and 80 RBI, stealing 28 bases, hitting 282 with a 356 on base, 475 slugging, and an 831 OPS for an OPS plus at 131. Over the last three seasons, you're looking at a guy who averages an OPS plus at 140. He played great defense at third base last year, another top 10 finish for the fourth straight season for him in MVP voting. Nothing not to like about J-Ram. He is for sure inside the top 10 again. Next up, we've got the biggest riser in today's video coming in at number eight, Corey Seager, shortstop of the Rangers. Whoa, 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 whoa. What Corey Seager did last year was out of control. He only played in 119 games and still finished second in the MVP voting. That's how good his numbers were. 33 homers, 42 doubles, led the American League despite missing, what, 42 games? 96 RBIs, hitting 327 with a 390 on base, 623 slugging, and a 1013 OPS for an OPS plus at 170. He just played out of his mind. Won the World Series, won the MVP in the World Series as well. What can't Corey Seager do? He was even pretty good at shortstop last year. There's no doubt in my mind he is a top 10 player in the league. Cracking the top 10 here at number 7, I've got Freddie Freeman of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah, Freeman deserves to be in the top 10. At the plate, just out of control. Good. Another guy who plays every single day. This is six year in a row. He's finished inside the top 10 of MVP vote. 29 homers, 59 doubles, which led Major League Baseball. Such an insane number. 102 RBIs, and he also stole 23 bases. Like, I mean, what the f***? 331 average, 410 on base, 567 slugging for a 976 OPS, and an OPS plus at 161. I don't even need to do the little thing where I'm like, and that's why he's the best. You know he's one of the best players in the league. Look at these numbers. They're crazy. Just missing out on the top five at number six, Juan Soto. Now of the New York Yankees. Whoa, I almost said Padres. Yeah, Juan Soto is just still that, like, special player we always knew he is. 162 games last year, 35 homers, 32 doubles, 109 RBIs, a major league best, 132 walks, walked more than he struck out, which is just so silly. 275 average, 410 on base, 519 slugging for a 930 OPS and an OPS plus at 158. Sixth in MVP voting, all-star, silver slugger. The list goes on and on why Juan Soto is one of the 10 best players in the league. Honestly, one of the six best because that's where he's at, number six. I don't really care how he plays the field it's irrelevant to me when you mash like this guy does and he's only 25 years old he has the chance to really pop off in yankee stadium getting the top five started at number five i got mike trout mike trout dropping in the rankings for a second straight season it feels weird but it's starting to get there mike trout going into his 32 year old season was not healthy last year hasn't really had a fully healthy season in quite a few something to keep an eye out for as trout keeps getting older but obviously still when he plays he's so special 82 games last year 18 18 homers, 14 doubles, 44 RBIs, hitting 263 with a 367 on base, 490 slugging for an 858 OPS for an OPS plus at 131. Remember, that's the worst season of his career by a long shot. Otherwise, you can lock Mike Trout in for an OPS plus typically around 170. 40 homers and 100 RBIs. He's still such a freak. I can't put him outside the top five just yet, though. Please stay healthy, Mike Trout. Please, I'm begging you. You're so good. Down one spot ever so slightly. At number four, I've got Aaron Judge of the New York Yankees. I don't like doing this because Aaron Judge, like, should not be dropping a spot. But the guys that popped up ahead of him just, like, were insanely good last year. Judge was also insanely good. 106 games, of course, had some injury issues last year. Not really his fault. Unlucky stuff, so I don't want to punish him for that. 37 homers, 16 doubles, 75 
five RBIs, hitting 267 with a 406 on base, 613 slugging for an OPS at 1019 and an OPS plus at 175. Phenomenal fielder, great athlete for the size that he is. And he's coming off of two seasons ago where he hit 62 home runs. I mean, Aaron Judge is a special player. You could make an argument for almost any spot outside of number one in this top five. Just slightly ahead of him at number three, I've got second baseman for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Mookie Betts. Yeah, second baseman, like that's where Dave Roberts said he's going to play. Obviously, we know he can play right field. That's his main position. But last year, Mookie Betts played a variety of them. Obviously, right field. He played second base. He played shortstop second in MVP voting last year. 152 games, 39 homers, 40 doubles, 107 RBIs, hitting 307 with a 408 on base, 579 slugging for an OPS at 987 and an OPS plus at 163. The second best season of his career outside of his MVP year in 2018. Like, Mookie Betts is just such a good player. Everything he does, he does phenomenally well. There are no holes in this guy's game outside of hitting in the postseason. And even then, we know that's fluky because we've watched him play, what, over 1,200 games, and he's just been one of the best players in baseball ever since he got called up. It's a Hall of Famer in the making. And then just missing out at the number one spot, at number two, I've got Ronald Acuna Jr., of course, of the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, that knee looks pretty good. Ronald Acuna Jr. is totally back. There's no worries about him. Put up one of the most crazy seasons I've ever seen in Major League Baseball during my lifetime. 159 games, 41 homers, 35 doubles, four triples, and 106 RBIs. But here's where it gets crazy. Yeah, he stole 73 bases, had 217 hits, scored 149 runs. My God. He also hit 337 with a 416 on base. 596 slugging for a 1012 OPS. You guys know he won the MVP. OPS plus at 168. He walked almost as much as he struck out. His K rate was under 11.5%. Like, what planet did Ronald Acuna come from? I'd love for my favorite team, the New York Mets, to sign guys from that same planet. Maybe his brother can be even a fraction of as good as this, hopefully, for us. Because Ronald Acuna Jr. is clearly the second best player in baseball. He's only 26 years old. I mean, this guy is just, he's not from this planet. I, I'll say it again. He's from another planet. He's so good. And then, of course, coming in at number one, it's Shohei Otani. I don't care if he's not going to be able to pitch next year. He's still the best player in the league. Talk about Acuna being from another planet. Otani's from another galaxy. We can't even comprehend where he came from. Last year in 135 games, while also pitching and also having elbow injuries, 44 homers led the American League, 26 doubles, 8 triples, 95 RBIs. Oh, and he stole 20 bases. You know how many pitchers have stole 20 bases ever before? Uh, I think only one is Shohei Otani. 304 average, 412 on base, 654 slugging for a major league best 1066 OPS OPS plus at 184 he won the MVP just got paid 700 million dollars by the Dodgers which is like I mean everything that I say about this guy doesn't feel real oh yeah and he pitched last year too remember that he still pitches he had a three ERA last year in, in 132 innings. Obviously, he's not going to pitch next season, but I don't care. He's still the best player in baseball. He's the best player I've literally ever seen play the game. It's not even relatively close. So there they are, my rankings for the top 50 players in Major League Baseball for the 2024 season. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking down in the comment section below. Where do you agree? Where do you disagree? I truly am so grateful for all the amazing support you guys give. This is one of my favorite things that I get to do every single season, and it's because you guys continuously support it like crazy so again thank you so much for that big shout out to everyone who has helped and been involved in the making of the 12 days of mlb rankings it's the fifth season that i've now done this which is absolutely crazy like it's crazy to think that i was still in college when these started and now i've been doing youtube full-time for a few years so again from the bottom of my heart thank you so much it really does mean a lot that i get to continue to make content for you guys i know it's been a slow year i know it's been a weird one but really excited for 2024 so many great things and plans coming at you that I can't wait to eventually share with you. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. It does celebrate. Happy holidays to those of you who don't. Probably going to take a day or two off here just because I am so exhausted from literally ripping rankings for the last two weeks. So expect to see a video from me in a couple days, which is why you should also subscribe so that when that video does come out, you get to see it. Drop a like on the video if you can. It really does help support my channel and this video and this entire series. Follow me on my social media at GiraffeNickMark. Links are in the description. That's where I'm wrapping it up. If you guys missed any of the 12 days of MLB rankings, this right here will be a playlist to those so you can just watch through it and hopefully find the positions that you missed and i don't really know what this is going to be this is going to be a wild card whatever youtube thinks you want to watch it's going to be right here so click through those if you have not yet seen them thank you guys so much for watching shout out to my editor cole again no more fielders on youtube if you want to check him out appreciate the work he's done for me thank you guys for watching have a merry christmas and i'll see you all whenever i see you for the next video bye